India has become the symbolic representation of all the difficulties of modern mankind. India will be the land of its resurrection, the resurrection to a higher and truer life. This is a message that was given by mother. It was put on a brochure on the inauguration of Auroville, a brochure about Auroville that the people from the ashram wanted to take also to Delhi to give to the press and to the government. So they asked mother for a message and she concentrated to know what had to be said. And all of a sudden, Sri Aurobindo gave her the revelation and gave her that message. She concentrated to know the why and the how of Auroville. And then that's the message she received from Sri Aurobindo. So if you want to understand the spiritual significance of Auroville, you need to understand the spiritual significance of India. And if you want to understand the spiritual significance of India, you need to understand the spiritual significance of the earth. What is the earth? Mother told us that the earth is a representative and symbolic world, a kind of crystallization and concentration of the evolutionary labor, giving it a more concrete reality. This is here on the earth that all the work is taking place. And the history of the earth is a symbolic history. The earth is where concrete form is given to all the work to be done to bring evolution to its perfection, its goal. What is the goal of evolution? For all of us to realize the divine and to manifest the divine here in matter. Elsewhere, Mother says, it is enough just to be and things simply are, but here on earth, you have to work. And the work we do here has clearly universal repercussion. It will impact everywhere else. But the thing is worked out here and the place of work is here. She adds that the earth has a place of distinction because unlike any other planet, it is evolutionary with a psychic entity at its center. This terrestrial world was formed to become the symbol of the universe and to be a point of concentration for the work of transformation, the divine transmutation. The divine cast itself into matter directly plunged and involved itself into matter. And more specifically, in the earth, the divine is totally involved and is trying now to push out through the psychic being, through us realizing our psychic being. It is how the divine is going to come out and express itself. So this is the important work that we have to do here on earth. And it's the only planet who has that. The same thing which in the history of the universe made the earth the symbolic representation of the universe is now taking place in India. India becomes itself the representation of all human difficulties. And then that is why that is why I was made to start Auroville, says the mother. So we can see that from the universe, we come to the planet Earth. And from the planet Earth, we come to India. It's each time a point of concentration. And in India, the point of concentration is Auroville. So Auroville has a very important role to play. This is the place where first the psychic being is going to be to become realized by a, a bigger group of people, by a collective. So that's the spiritual significance of Auroville. It's like a laboratory. In the laboratory, you bring all the elements of a problem together in a limited space. And that allows you to accelerate and intensify the work of research and of finding of discovery so that you can find solutions to problems. Sri Aurobindo spoke about India also as a laboratory. 
He said, the grand workshop of spiritual experiment, the laboratory of the soul is India. And he insists that the East alone has some knowledge of the truth. The East alone can teach the West. The East alone can save mankind. And I really have to insist on that because we see very much this East-West conflict taking place also, also in Auroville, and how the Indian spirituality is absolutely crucial to help us out of our difficulties. In the same way as India is a laboratory of the soul and Auroville itself is a laboratory, man himself, says Sri Aurobindo, may well be a thinking and living laboratory in whom and with whose conscious cooperation, nature wills to work out the superman, the God. So the individual himself is also a laboratory. It's like from the infinitely large to the infinitely small, we have this concentration taking place, like Russian dolls with the universe being the bigger uh, doll and then the planet and then the country, the collectivity, and then we end up with the individual. So each one of us is a living laboratory in which the divine is being worked out or tr tries to express itself. But you can't do the work alone as an individual. It is the whole work of transformation. You can't do it only in one individual being because each individual being is partial and limited and represents only one truth or one law of the world, the, what the Indians call the Dharma. So the totality of the transformation cannot be done through one single body. We need a collectivity. And that's why a collectivity was created. If you want to have a general action on the whole universe, you have at least to have a minimum number of physical beings to do the work. And Mother mentioned that in the past, 12 were enough. But now with the complexity of the modern world, we need many more. I, and I believe that's why she spoke about 50,000 now for Orovi, because as a collective, we have to have a certain amount of human beings in order to be representative of the entire humanity. So that's the, the principle of the representative group. We need a representative sample of humanity so that each one can work upon its own difficulties, which, which are multiple. So each one represents one of the difficulties to be conquered. Each case, she says, is an impossibility to be solved. And when all these impossibilities are resolved, then the work will be accomplished. It's the idea of the Arch of Noah. Here in Auroville, we have people from all over the world, all walks of life because we need this representation, like the older species on the Arch of Noah. Sri Aurobindo also spoke about that. In one of his letters, he says, humanity should be variously represented for the problem of transformation has to deal with all sorts of elements, favorable and unfavorable. That's why people come from all quarters and are of all kinds. And he says also that in the course of the yoga, collectively, as each plane is dealt with, all its difficulties arise. That's another aspect that we see in Auroville, is that when we are trying to achieve something substantial, all difficulties arise more than if we were not trying anything. And he says that explains much that people would not expect to see in Auroville. That's why we see all these conflicts and all these fights, because truly we are trying something else. We are trying to achieve something. And due to that, all these difficulties arise. It's like, Auroville is like a gem polishing machine. This collective yoga that we are doing here is like we are all rocks into a drummer and we constantly bump on each other and hit each other. And through this grinding, we 
slowly, slowly soften and become more polished and we smoothen each other. This is the whole activity of, of the collective yoga, the collective character of the sadhana. And what would take thousands of years in nature here because of this intensifying process, it goes much faster, but also it's a lot more intense. And mother says also that because of that, all the difficulties here increase considerably. There will be all the frictions, contacts, reactions, all that comes from outside as tests exactly on your weak point, the most sensitive spot. Here you will hear just the words, the phrase that you would not like to hear. And people will make just the gesture that would offend. You will find yourself repeatedly in the presence of circumstance, of facts, an object, whatever. Just that thing among all that you would not like to happen. And that is exactly what will happen. That's why it's a very challenging thing also to live here because truly we are trying to achieve something else. And due to that, we get all these difficulties coming out. The difficulties are multiplied here also, she says, because this is a place for realization. Auroville will be the first place. It will be the cradle of the Superman. So this is here first that, will, that the divine will manifest itself. So that's why also the, the, the difficulties are more intense here than in the rest of the world. In ordinary life, she says, you are unconscious, you exist in a quite vague semi-consciousness. You know nothing of yourself except an appearance, nothing more. You are and remain always incapable of fulfilling your mission. Fulfilling your mission means to realize your psychic being. So you do not need obstacles. You are, you are not in the core of the difficulty. You are simply an appearance. You are wholly in the appearance. Your defects are small, your virtues are small, your capacity is mediocre and your difficulty is mediocre. You are mediocre totally, constantly. That's ordinary life, she says. But it is only when you begin to walk on the path of realization that your possibilities become real and at once your difficulties become much greater. Naturally, things become intensified. So when you see this in, in this light, then all what we are going through, all what we've been through in Oroville, also in the last few months, suddenly makes sense. But then Sri says, going back to his previous letter, when the preliminary work is over in the laboratory, things must change. So when we will have achieved some substantial realization in Oroville as a collective, then only, we will start seeing changes in the rest of the world. This means we have a huge responsibility here in Oroville. We have to, to make this city. We have to build this city. We have to manifest this, this dream. We have to become 50,000. We have to work on ourselves. We have to go beyond our egos. We have to do this collective sadhana because the entire planet is waiting on us. There is enough suffering. It's not like we have all the time in the world. It's time now for us to accelerate the movement if we want really the world to become a better place. It is on our shoulders. To continue the letter of Sri Aurobindo, he continues and, and adds a new idea. He says, also, much stress has not been laid on human fellowship of the ordinary kind. He speaks about the ashram here. Though good feeling, consideration, and courtesy should always be there. Because that is not the aim. 
It is unity in a new consciousness that is the aim. And the first thing is for each to do his sadhana, to arrive at that new consciousness and realize oneness here. And I wanted to bring up that point because we've heard a lot about human unity again in the last few months. But many people do not understand what truly mother meant when she spoke about human unity or what Sri Aurobindo meant. So that brings us to the purpose of Auroville. Mother said the purpose of Auroville is to realize human unity. She even put it in the charter. Auroville will be a living embodiment of an actual human unity. But another quote that she gave and that many people do not know about, she spoke that four years later, she must have seen in the meantime what was happening. And she gave an important precision. She said, Auroville wants to be the first realization of human unity. And she adds, based on the teaching of Sri Aurobindo. And this is major key because we don't want here fellowship or we don't want here especially human unity like many people understand it, like doing things in groups or chanting around the fire or hugging each other. This is not the human unity that Sri Aurobindo spoke about. So if you look at the teaching of Sri Aurobindo, what is the teaching of Sri Aurobindo? The teaching of Sri Aurobindo is that behind the appearances of the universe, there is the reality of a being and consciousness, a self of all things, one and eternal. And all beings are united in that one self and spirit, but divided by a certain separativity of consciousness an ignorance of their true self and reality in the mind, life, and body. So it's the image of the trees with the, all the leaves who are all part of the same tree, but all perceive each other as being separate. But we are all one at our core. That's the teaching of Sri Aurobindo. And he adds, it is possible by a certain psychological discipline, the yoga, to remove this veil of separative consciousness and become aware of the true self, the divinity within us and all. This one being and consciousness is involved in matter and evolution is the method by which it liberates itself. So the divine has involved it itself completely into the unconsciousness and into, into matter and from within now it's pushing, 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 pushing to re-emerge. That's how it created life, mind. And now Sri Aurobindo says, the next step of the evolution, the involved divinity in things will release itself entirely and it becomes possible for life to manifest perfection. But it is not, however, by the mental will in men that this can be wholly done. A conversion has to be made, a turning of the consciousness by which mind has to change into the higher principle. And that's what we, we can do by the practice of yoga. Replace the mind's ignorance or its very limited knowledge by a supramental truth consciousness and make it possible for the human being to find himself and grow out of his still animal humanity into a diviner race. So if you want, it's like a triangle. As long as we remain at the base of the triangle and we look, keep on looking at each other in the, in the ego consciousness, we remain divided. We are far away from each other. We don't understand each other. We've perceived the life completely differently and we fight. The only solution for all of us to unite truly is to start looking up, 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 up towards the divine, towards this truth consciousness. We have to grow beyond the ego and go towards this truth consciousness, which is one. And when the more we go high, the more we become one in our perception of reality. 
And that's how we, we, we grow out of all these fights and all these conflicts. In this new consciousness, there would be no ego insistence on personal idea, no push or clamor of personal will and interest. There would be instead the unifying sense of a common truth in many forms, a common self in many consciousnesses and bodies. That's where we need to reach each one of us, especially in Auroville. And when, when, when you will have a, a huge group of beings who will have achieved that, this will be really heaven on earth, huh? the, the, the kingdom of, of God on earth. Mother says, unity does not come from any exterior disposition, but by becoming conscious of the eternal oneness. And she spoke about some people who wanted to help for Auroville's development. She said, if they do not know about yoga, how can they understand the purpose of Auroville? If you want peace upon earth, first establish peace in your heart. And if you want union in the world, first unify the different parts of your own being. And I think that's a message we could give to all the Aurovillians also. If you want peace in Auroville, first establish peace in your heart. And if you want union, unity in Auroville, first unify the different parts of your own being, which mean unify all your physical, your vital, your mind around your psychic being. And this is the very meaning of yoga, is the union with the divine. So the union of all our external surface being with our psychic being, with the divine within us. Mother says, shake off all narrowness, selfishness, limitation, and wake up to the consciousness of human unity. This is the only way to achieve peace and harmony. And I insist on the fact that human unity is a state of consciousness. It is not an external action of, you know, as I said, hugging or whatever. It is really a state of consciousness. And it is a state of consciousness which is beyond ego, where you see yourself in others and you, and you, and you understand others as yourself. And for that, Mother says again, I know it's not easy because truly to achieve that famous consciousness, to work and to become free from our egos, our desires, and all, it's really not easy. This is the context of Auroville. It is very challenging. As I said, it's about all this, this polishing that we do on each other, this bumping into each other, hating each other, fighting with each other. But through all this fighting, something is happening. We are growing slowly, slowly. We are getting more and more polished and we end up being gems, shiny. But it is not easy. So she says, I know it's not easy, but we are not here to do easy things. The whole world is there for those who like an easy life. I would like people to feel that coming to Auroville does not mean coming to an easy life. It means coming to a gigantic effort for progress. And those who don't want to keep up with it should leave. She's clear. That's how things stand. I wish it were so strong, the need for progress, for the divinization of the being so intense that those who are unable, unable or unwilling to adjust to it would leave by themselves. Oh, this is not what I expected, they would say. As it is now, all those who want an easy life and do what they please, as they please, say, let's go to Auroville. And it should be just the opposite. People should know that coming to Auroville means an almost superhuman effort for progress. And now I want to finish with a quote that mother gave on the occasion of the 100th birth anniversary of Sri Aurobindo. So in 1972, 
for the New Year cards, she said. This year is consecrated to Sri Aurobindo. To understand his teaching better and try to put it into practice is certainly the best way of showing our gratitude to him for all the light, knowledge and force which he has so generously brought to the earth. May his teaching enlighten and guide us and what we cannot do today, we shall do tomorrow. Let us take the right attitude in all sincerity and it will truly be a bon année, a good year. <laughs>